next speaker is someone who has devoted his scientific skills and innovative talent to improve the life of millions of people. He has unwavering commitment to creating solutions that local communities can build and sustain themselves. Please welcome the 2013 Stockholm Water Prize laureate, Dr. Peter Morgan. Nature and the biological sciences. 
I was introduced actually to the world of sanitation and water 40 years ago. I won't tell you the story in detail, of course, there's no time. But that love of biology and the natural world that has remained with me since that time. I've also chosen to talk on something which is very precious to us all, education and the schools. And of course the vital partnerships we have with industry and not least those people who are the trainers, the trainers of the trainers. All these people are very, very valuable in this world in which we live. I am always reminded of a wonderful quotation and as a biologist using nature as a guide and partner has helped me enormously to see things more clearly and Mother Nature, as we all know, has worked out things pretty well and it pays to draw on her wisdom and design and elegant simplicity of her works. And I am constantly reminded of this beautiful saying the designer knows he has reached perfection, not when there is no longer anything to add, but when there is no longer anything to take away. That's a beautiful thing. And of course, Albert Einstein once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. But I'm not, somebody here must tell me what he meant by the last few words. What is simpler than simple? That's what he said. We all learn from our mentors and also from personal experience. And I want to tell you a, a very brief story about an experience I had in Malawi when I was studying fish and fisheries in Malawi on Lake Chilwa. I think you can see there a beautiful picture. The story is brief, but it's very significant for me as a, a person. We set off on a lake which looked like glass in a tiny boat. We were sampling the water. The wind got up and we sank about five miles offshore. The lake is very shallow. Chilwa is a very shallow alkaline lake and we began, began to walk back and there you see a picture of a much younger Morgan pushing a boat. The memory of it is very very big in my mind because we may have died actually because lakes like that are filled with aggressive creatures and the muddy floor slowed us down we were miles offshore we were actually rescued from a fisherman using a dugout canoe he saved our lives I think and that story had a big effect on the way I think about things that in, indeed in, in simplicity there is elegance and I wanted to mention this thing very importantly to you all. Those, I've, and I've chosen three items here which are very simple and they have no moving parts. The dugout canoe is one. There's another one called the Blair VIP, it's a ventilator improved pit. Ethiopian Airlines wouldn't accept these on the plane, so I couldn't bring them with me. <laughs> However, I did bring one piece of magic with me. And I know that I have two great delightful Swedish ladies who are going to assist me to demonstrate this piece of magic to you. It's actually in Zimbabwe, it's called a Makombi. It's actually a calabash that is a vegetable, or should be vegetable, it was created by nature. It's been converted into a hand washing device. Now this is something that was created by nature, but not as a hand washing device, but as a vegetable. But many years ago, a very clever man called Dr. Jim Watt. Well, let's give them a hand. They did do it. <laughs> he used about 550 uh, mils of water to wash your hands. And anybody, anybody with a, a measuring flask, when you turn on the tap, just measure to see how many mils of water to wash your hands in a tap. It's quite different in fact. So, you've seen that one. And I wanted to tell you something else too. Some of the principles that we use in our sanitation also come from nature. You see these pictures here. In fact, the vent pipe of VIPs 
It was actually invented by the termites, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of years ago. It mimics the ant turret. And you can see there some curious images of the ant turret compared to VIP vent or vent pipes. Also, of great interest to a biologist is the fact that fly control depends on fly instinctive behaviour. Flies move towards an odour on their way into a toilet and to the light on the way out. And they are trapped by a fly screen and they are at the mercy of their own instincts. And in fact, nature's in control. And that's what you can see on that picture there, a lizard, also part of the natural world, is waiting to catch flies at the head of the pipe because the lizard knows that they are coming back. And that's nature at work again. In evolution, that nature has taught us about adapting and evolving over time, it's called evolution in the biological world, but in another sense it could also be worded as a world which can start simply and upgrade over time. And this is a very important concept, I think, that we have to follow. And this simple approach has been established both in simple water supplies and simple sanitation. There is, in fact, an upgradable series of designs for both toilets and retreats and water supplies which can follow through a path of upgradability from the simpler ones to the more sophisticated ones. That has been established. And we all know that the use of groundwater is vital to most water programs. And we all have heard, whilst it may not be the case in Stockholm, certainly where we live in Zimbabwe, groundwater is falling at a fast rate, which is very frightening indeed. I believe that the concept of self-supply is very important. And I'm just jumping ahead a little bit with myself. I wanted to mention that I believe that some assistance given to very poor families to help them take that first step is incredibly important. On a new, slightly different subject, we talk of ecological sanitation, where nature also has played a very beneficial part. Here we see that the soil, in fact, helps to convert feces into what we call a new soil. And ecological toilets are designed in fact, to make that possible. I'm going to move just slightly backwards again. You see there, there are three pictures. One is called an arboloo. An arboloo is a tree toilet. Arbor, of course, comes from the Latin. Somebody must tell me sometime where the word loo comes from. I'm not quite sure about it. That's a very simple one. It's been used uh, fairly widely. Uh, people tell me there are about 90,000 of them in, in Ethiopia and around East Africa. The second one is where you alternate between two pits, adding soil and ash, and there's a remarkable transformation. Now, as a zoologist, the word fossa to me means a hole in the brain or a hole in the skull. That's a fossa. It's a hole. I think in Portuguese it means a hole too. I think it comes from the Latin fossil, an alternating bed. And then we have the urine diversion toilets that have been very strongly promoted from Stockholm, a new way of saving water and also being able to process the contents. So that's a very fascinating development too. The other thing is, and very interesting and biological too, is that Bacteria in the soil also help to convert urine nitrogen, which cannot be used by plants, into a nitrate which can be used by plants. And in that picture there, you can see that by varying the amount of urine which is water, you can vary the growth rate of not only maize, but trees. There's a lovely picture there of two gum trees, one fed with water, one fed with water and urine, and the growth rate is significant. And actually, of perhaps even greater interest is that patch of spinach that you see there on the right-hand side. That's in a miniature garden, you can call it a ring bean garden, one metre across, fed, in fact, by a mixture of urine and uh, water. 
over nine months it produced over 20 kilograms of very luxuriant vegetables and tasty too I might say over a nine month period and that's a phenomenal growth rate something that has always been very close to my heart is the world of trees trees are one of the most wondrous wondrous of all plants on earth they are the longest of all living things they serve to protect our planet by modulating the atmosphere and protecting erosion in the soil they are the providers of fruit and vitamins timber fuel and construction and shade and great beauty their presence and growth can be multiplied many many times indeed by their association with human sanitation and water supplies and in fact they make very good partners so that's of great interest to me i want to now go to a very something that's very dear to my heart i was very privileged as a boy to have wonderful teachers who inspired me very much to take the course i did it's the association between education and the schools we have done work with the school children and my friend and assistant Annie Kanyemba has worked with me for some years in training school children, girls, boys, on building toilets as extracurricular activities. And you see there that in fact another piece of nature has been involved. You'll see that the structures there are actually spiral. Another creation by nature, like the dome and the egg, it has a round shape, a spiral shape, uh, developed by nature, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of years ago in the Ammonites, and even the snails that carry the huts here today. It's a beautiful shape, and if you build in that shape, even if you're sliding off course, it will remain there because that's a natural design. And the kids love it. Here too, we see partnership with schools. You can see the great school children doing the experiments there, showing that the uh, urine diluted water can actually have a huge effect on the growth of maize and vegetables. And also there on the right, the growth of trees, which can be planted in woodlots. There's a little girl there feeding a young gum tree with diluted urine. And now those trees are huge. I'll move on to another important thing, hand washing. You've seen one of the super hand washers with a combi. There's an even simpler one that uses a tin can. And the children actually are taught how to make tin can hand washers. And I learned recently that in Sao Paulo, Brazil, they actually reprocess 1.7 million alloy cans an hour. They're actually recycled into more cans. In this case, they're recycled into hand washing devices. And you could argue that a good hand washing device is as good as a toilet in terms of the disease transmission. Also, I'd like to mention there Annie's beautiful book. Uh, about growing up, a book about menstrual hygiene management, uh, a wonderful teacher, and she's written that in Shona and Debele and English, and there are some copies here. It's a wonderful piece of work. <coughs> I now move very quickly on to partnerships with industry and the private sector. You see here a line of a national hand pump, it's called the Bush Pump. Incidentally, our national toilet is called the Blair Tree. So we have a bush pump and a Blair Tree, but neither of them is related to any politician. <laughs> you see there too a man I've spoken with many times who actually, one of the many people who actually builds these pumps. We don't compete with India in terms of numbers, so we only have a mere 55,000 pumps of that type around and not millions. The same manufacturers, or not the same manufacturers, the plastic manufacturers also are beginning to mass produce the McCormick, which you've just seen here. It's all in the public domain, it's copyable, and I'm told 
could make a very big difference to the health of people. So, summing up, there's this wonderful partnership with Trainers 2. I've always been very close to trainers made for many years, decades in fact. And I think one of their important things to do is to inspire others by setting our example. And you see a few pictures here of my treasured uh, colleagues and friends who helped me to spread this word about what we're doing and to train others, the trainers of trainers. Very important too in the world of hand pumps. This is a very brief one. One of the great problems which we face in Africa is the maintenance issue of hand pumps and in fact indeed of all water supplies. It's a very big issue where a very important aspect of training comes into that and inspiring people to do something. Making partnerships thus brings together knowledge, understanding and collective awareness of the importance of water supply and sanitation in our lives. We have children there building their toilets, women repairing pumps. But summing up, I believe one thing is very crucial. Our greatest partnership is <coughs> as mankind, is with Mother Earth herself. So we must come to terms with the world we live in. We must learn about the Earth's finite resources and not just take the opportunities which the earth puts in our path. We must be careful in using fresh water, the most precious resource on our planet. A very survival on this planet rests solely on coming to terms with planet earth. Our only home on this never-ending universe. Thank you very much.